You can find almost anything on the internet, but when you find it, chances are it's written or spoken in English. According to most estimates, more than half and perhaps as much as 80% of internet content is in English. Nearly 70% of the world's internet domains are hosted in the United States, about 11 times more than the second place nation, Germany. Since only about a third of the world's 1.1 billion internet users speak English as their first language, two thirds of the people using the internet have to have some understanding of a non-native language if they want to read the rich content available online. Many see this relative monoculture of the internet as a tremendous advantage. For example, people from all over the world can take free online courses at MIT. With English serving as a sort of default cyber language, we can avoid the complexities and inefficiencies that have prevailed in pre-internet communications. We don't want to uh, introduce diversity and in a way that destroys the interoperability of the internet. The, the uniformity of, of um, its behavior is important. But others say it is time for the internet to become more diverse, and things are starting to change as the internet expands beyond its western origins to reach people across the world. And that is why the issue of internet diversity is high on the agenda at the second annual Internet Governance Forum here in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. A globe-spanning group of people from many different ethnicities, religions, economies, and cultures have gathered here to talk about ways to broaden the spectrum of people who go online and encourage the development of more content that represents diverse languages, ages, abilities, and perspectives. In short, they want the internet to look more like the world. Today, internet engineers are adapting the internet's main traffic directories that keep track of the computer host names used in web and email addresses. Up to now, these addresses have only been able to use the 26 letters of the Roman alphabet used in English. But the Internet Corporation for Assigned Names and Numbers, known as ICANN, is now testing internationalized domain names that allow internet users to make subpages of the net in their own languages. The test includes Arabic, Chinese, Greek, Hindi, Japanese, Korean, Persian, Russian, Tamil, and Yiddish. These are important steps towards building a truly multilingual internet. It's their own languages. Nobody can get his language and put it right away. It's my identity, my nationality. I have to speak my, my own language. So I have to, um, not all people in the Arab world can speak English. So uh, does this mean that they will not use the internet? We have to focus on all the all people, all kind of people. As more non-English speaking people begin to use the internet, these efforts are gaining momentum, especially because of the necessity for governments, companies and organizations to reach out to people in their native languages. The numbers tell the story of a rapid change in the languages of the digital revolution. While the number of English-speaking users on the internet increased about 150% since 2000, the number of Arabic-speaking users increased nearly tenfold. Portuguese speakers increased more than 500%, and Chinese, French, and Spanish-speaking users weren't far behind. And of course, China's more than 1.3 billion people are in the early adoption phase of the internet revolution. Fewer than 14% of the Chinese are online. And as more of them get connected to the internet, they'll be looking for sites in their native language. So where is all this push toward a multilingual internet taking us? If I can't understand your website and you can't understand mine, then what have we accomplished? Developers are trying to design more sophisticated translation software. An approach called statistical machine translation is being used to develop a 20 billion word world translation base. In the meantime, Babelfish, Google Translate, and other rough translation systems are in use. And more websites are being developed to provide content in multiple languages. Diversity also means opening the web up to people who have disabilities, and those who are illiterate. The DAISY Consortium expands usability by creating digital talking books. We need to move forward uh, with the, so, so to say, multi-sensory uh, communication and knowledge 
access system. That is Daisy. Deaf Planet is a site that emphasizes the use of large symbols, bright colors, and loud noises. Optional features also allow those with hearing disabilities to follow audio on the site through sign language. Work continues to fully include the disabled and illiterate online. For instance, the Internet Society and other organizations support a global standard of usability known as universal design. Providing content that is useful to people of all abilities presents significant technical and economic challenges, but the prospect of bringing a more diverse mix of users to the Internet offers rich benefits. Not only does it uh, accessible design enable uh, lower the cost of access to content, which affects everybody, whether you have a disability or not, uh, the accessible design also enables people who are illiterate or cannot uh, read to hear what's being said. And uh, so English, a second language, or whatever the language is, uh, will be more accessible. There, and there are many other uh, examples. Uh, people who are, uh, who are aging, older adults, uh, benefit from the functionality that's there. And I talk a lot about that. The promise of diverse users contributing more diverse content can bring forward the wisdom of indigenous people, the magic of ideas that are a bit or even a lot out of the mainstream, the vision of an isolated but talented thinker or artist, the cross-pollination of concepts that can advance humanities in ways we may not now imagine. Instead of hierarchy, instead of privilege, it's going to be skills and competence and bottom-up and grassroots and leveling the hierarchy, which is to me what the excitement of the Internet has always been. When people at the Internet Governance Forum discuss diversity, they are also discussing the need for open software and Internet architecture standards that everyone can use bringing the internet to other underserved groups, including older persons and, in some cultures, women, and public policies that support user-generated content online. From the beginning, the concepts of internet have been built around empowerment, allowing people everywhere, in every circumstance, the power to make a difference globally. This, then, is the promise of diversity, and moving all of us toward that goal is the reason meetings such as this are so important. From Rio de Janeiro, I'm Danica Lewis, reporting for Imagining the Internet and Elon University's School of Communications.